Chapter two of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Female Responsibilities Much has been said within a few years of the duties and responsibilities of young men, especially the young men of our republic. A great deal that has been said has, in my view, been appropriate and well timed. My own attention has been frequently turned to the same class of individuals, nor do I regret it. My only regret is that what I have said has not been said to better purpose. Counsels and cautions to young men standing on slippery places as they confessedly do can hardly be too numerous, provided those who give them use discretion and remember their responsibility, not only to the tribunal of public opinion, but to a tribunal still higher the snares the dangers the difficulties the influence the responsibilities of young men at least in the united states can hardly be overrated would that they could be so trained and directed as to fully understand them and govern themselves accordingly would that they could be made to exert that moral influence in the salvation of our race politically no less than morally nationally no less than individually of which they are so capable yet after every concession of this kind i am compelled to believe that responsibilities and influence of young women to say nothing at present of their dangers are much more weighty than those of young men i am decidedly of the opinion that the future holiness and happiness of the world in which we live depends much more on the character of the rising generation of the female sex than on the character of our young men it was said by dr rush long ago that mothers and schoolmasters plant the seeds of nearly all the good and evil in our world presuming that by schoolmasters he meant teachers of both sexes will any one doubt the truth of his assertion will any one doubt the justness of remark in the late western review that if this world is ever to become a better and happier world woman must be foremost if not the principal agent in rendering it so but as mothers are never mothers till they have been daughters is it not obvious that the right education of these last is as great a work as any to which human mind and human effort have ever been called if woman moves the world intellectually morally and even in effect politically as no doubt she does is it not of primary importance that she should be taught as well as teach herself to move it right can it be necessary to advert in this place to the well-known and acknowledged fact that almost every man of extensive influence for good or for evil whom the world has produced became what he was through maternal influence caesar and caligula and talleyrand and napoleon became what they were in consequence of their mothers no less than alfred and doddridge and howard and washington for let it not be forgotten that mothers and teachers according to dr rush and in fact according to common observation too plant the seeds of the world of evil no less than of the world of good how exceedingly important then that they should be well educated from whom in the language of another writer our virtues are and from whom our vices may be we would add must be derived at least in no small proportion but i am using the term education without explaining it let me then ere i proceed to say more on the subject of female responsibility explain what i mean by education especially female education mere instruction in the sciences is indeed education it is however but a very small part of it to educate is to train up in this view all are of course educated and every thing which has an influence in developing mind or body and in training up if for good or for evil is entitled justly to the name of education but if the above definition be just if whatever concerns our development or the formation of any part of our character physical intellectual social or moral is education then it must follow that there are two kinds of education bad and good all persons places and things which affect us and what does not affect us and influence us for good or for evil must educate us i am aware that this definition is not new still it is not generally received or if received not generally acted upon there is still an almost universal cling to the old inadequate incorrect idea that the principal part of education consists in the cultivation of the intellect and that too by set lessons received for the most part at the schools 
the true idea of education therefore must be continually enforced till it becomes common property and until mankind act as if they believe what they profess in regard to it when solomon says train up a child in the way he should go he is talking of what i call education and the kind of education which he is recommending is good education i don't believe he had the schools in his mind the infant school the sabbath school the common school the high school or the university far be it for me to attempt to detract from the value of our schools on the contrary i regard them as of inestimable worth when duly attended to what i insist on is that they are not the all in all of education and that in fact the influence in training up or forming good character is so trifling that is comparatively they scarcely deserve to be thought of when speaking of education as a whole especially the education of daughters and though one of the tribes of the nation to which solomon belonged over which he reigned and for whom in particular he wrote is said to have been schoolmasters by profession and another priest i can hardly conceive that when he was inspired to give the educational advice just alluded to he ever turned so much as a thought to the little corner of palestine allotted to simeon or to the levites in their respective but more scattered stations solomon was in all probability addressing himself chiefly to the fathers and mothers and grandfathers and grandmothers and all other relatives of israel the class who by their united influence make the son and daughter and grandson and granddaughter what they are a blessing or a curse to the world in which they are to live for according as children are brought up by these teachers or by the influence which are shed upon them from day to day and from hour to hour so are they well or ill-educated if i have been successful in presenting the meaning of a term which is not frequently used in this book but almost everywhere else it will follow as a matter of course that i do not attach too much importance to the education of daughters themselves nor to their education as the teachers of others for if to educate is to form character what young woman can be found of any age or in any family who is not a teacher have young women often considered daughters especially how much they influence younger brothers and sisters if any such there are in the family where they dwell have they considered how much they sometimes influence the character and how much more they might do it not only of their schoolmates and playmates but also of their more aged friends and companions their parents grandparents and others i could tell them were this the place for it many a true story of reading daughters who have been the means of awakening in their aged parents or grandparents or other friends a taste for reading which they might otherwise have gone down to the grave without acquiring it i could tell them of many a father and mother and grandfather and grandmother grown grey in vice hardened even by intemperance as well as other vices who have been reformed by the prattle or the reproof or the prayers of a good daughter is not such a daughter a teacher but i am most anxious to convince young women of their responsibilities in regard to the rising generation especially their own brothers and companions i am anxious if i can to convince all who read this volume that god has by his providence committed to their charge in no small degree the bodies and minds and the souls of those with whom in this world they are associated that according to their own contact good or ill will be in no small measure the health and knowledge and excellence of their friends and companions that according to their efforts attended either by the blessing of god or the tokens of his displeasure will be the condition of millions for time and for eternity but is it so are daughters of daughters merely to say nothing as yet of maternal influence are daughters thus influential is it true that the destiny of millions is thus committed to their keeping i have seen the conduct of a whole school i speak now of the common or district school graduated by the conduct of a single virtuous and amiable and intelligent young woman not twelve years old who attended it i have seen a whole sabbath school not little less affected by the prompt attention to chorus behaviour and pious example of some elder member of an older class to whom the younger members of classes male and female looked up as to a sort of monitor or i know not what to call it for the impression thus made is better seen and felt than described the bad behaviour of a young woman in these circumstances is indeed equally influentially nay more so 
inasmuch as the current of human nature sets more readily downward than upward still a good example is influential greatly so would that it were generally known how much so suppose now that by your good behaviour and pious example in the sabbath school you are the means of turning the attention of one younger companion male or female to serious things and of bringing down upon that young person the blessing of almighty god suppose that individual should live to teach or to preach or in some other form to bless the world by bringing numbers the knowledge and love and inculcation of the very truth which has saved his own soul and these last in their turn should become apostles or missionaries to others and so on is there any end at least till the world comes to an end of the good influence to which a good sabbath school pupil may exert but this is something more than a supposed case is it not in effect just what is actually taking place around us in the world continually indeed that a long train of good influences has been frequently set a going in the sabbath school for sabbath schools are but of recent origin but people have always been led along to virtue or vice to piety or impiety to bless the world or to prove a curse to it by one another a word or look from a relative or friend or acquaintance in the school or somewhere else has often given a turn to the whole character a word it is said may move a continent something less than a word a look or smile of approbation may move more than a continent it may move not merely a west but an alexander a caesar a napoleon a washington and a howard men who in their turn moved the world i have spoken of the influence which a young woman may have on millions through the medium of the sabbath school but if she may influence in this way the millions of those who are to come after her how much more may she do in forming character for the great future in the family her presence in the sabbath school is only once a week an hour or two a day once in seven days whereas her influence in the family is going on perpetually the clothes of alexander the great are said to have been made to a great extent by his sisters and those of augustus caesar were made for many years by his can we doubt that these young females were influential in a great many respects in the education of these conquerors what could the latter have done but for the assistance and influence of mothers and sisters and can we have any alexanders and caesars at the present day to carry on the moral and intellectual conquests which are so necessary in the world without the age and cooperation of mothers and sisters sisters little know it is almost impossible for them to know how much they do to bring about results to educate their brothers and friends for the work which they perform whether good or evil the sisters of franklin little knew what they were doing for young benny as they called him while they assisted their mother in taking care of his clothes in preparing his food and in ministering to his other physical wants yes and to the wants of his mind too who can say that benjamin franklin would ever have been what benjamin franklin was without their aid joined to the efforts of their mother many a young female having caught in some degree the spirit of doing good has sighed for opportunities what can i do she has seemed to say here at home if i could be a missionary at ceylon or south africa or the sandwich islands or even if i could be a teacher i could perhaps do something but as it is i must remain a mere cipher in the world i would do good but i have no opportunities she who says this is undoubtedly sincere she is however greatly mistaken her opportunities for doing good for exerting an influence to bless her race are neither few nor small there is indeed a difference a very great difference in human conditions and circumstances and yet i am persuaded no female is so secluded as not to be able to fulfil towards her race a most important mission i know of an excellent female who is often heard lamenting her want of opportunities for usefulness she has the spirit of doing good as she supposes and as i fully believe and yet she is miserable she makes herself so by repining continually as her want of ability to perform the good work which her heart meditates she would rejoice to devote herself to the elevation of her race she would gladly go to india or the south seas if her aged and uncultivated intellect did not exclude her from being a candidate now without saying a word in disparagement of foreign missions the success of which i would gladly contribute largely not only by prayers but by pecuniary contributions 
truth compels me to say of this female that i am by no means sure that she could do more for humanity or more in fact for the cause of christ by a foreign mission than she is doing by a domestic one the domestic mission hers indeed is in the fullest sense of the term she is an ordinary domestic and no more in the family to which she belongs but what is the condition of that family the head of it is the distinguished teacher of a private female seminary here he has prepared hundreds of young women so far i mean as the mere instruction of what he calls a family school is concerned for usefulness as teachers as sisters as ministered to the age and as mothers to the young suppose he has instructed in his comparative excellent way two hundred females suppose again one half of the females he has instructed and counselled and lived among should in their turn each form as much character as he has already done and he is yet but a middle-aged man and suppose half the disciples of each of these pupils should do the same and thus on till the year of our lord two thousand only which is as we have reason to believe but a little way towards the end of the world suppose one hundred only of each two hundred should live to have influence seventy-five of them as the mothers of families of the usual size and twenty-five only as teachers there will then be five generations in one hundred and sixty years and the number of children which will come under the influence of this line or succession of mothers and teachers will be no less than ninety millions a number equal to six times the present population of the united states now what i have here supposed is by no means beyond the pale of possibility two hundred pupils is not a large number for one teacher to instruct during his whole life nor is twenty-five a large proportion of two hundred to become teachers nor is seventy-five a large number in two hundred to live to have families nor two children in each family upon an average a very large number to come to maturity and have families in their turn besides i have reckoned but four generations in one hundred and sixty years exclusive of that now educating so that i have kept my estimates within due bounds in every respect do you ask what the domestic of whom i have spoken has to do with all this i answer very much very much indeed has she not rendered to the teacher in whose employ she has been that kind of services without which he could not have followed his occupation and if ninety millions or even one-tenth that number of citizens should in the course of the next two centuries reap the benefit of his labours and become lights in the world is it too much to say that she has been an important aid in accomplishing the work nay it is even too much to affirm that unless the part which she has acted had been performed by her or somebody else the school could not have gone on and two hundred young women could not have received the teacher's instructions why then is not this humble domestic to whom i allude a benefactor to her race if a benefaction it is to raise up and qualify for usefulness two hundred females as well as he who has the credit of it i will not indeed say that any thing like as much credit is due to her as to him but i may say and with truth that she was an important auxiliary in producing the results which have been mentioned but if a humble domestic one who imagines herself so obscure as to be of little service to a world which perhaps estimates her services almost as low as she does herself if such an individual may besides the general influence of her character upon a family be an indispensable aid on the work of sending forth to the world a host of female missionaries equal in the progress of less than two centuries centuries at the dawn of the millennium to ninety millions what may not be done by a sister in a well-ordered family one who is not only well educated and governed herself but who educates and governs others as well it may indeed be said that a domestic in the family of a distinguished teacher may directly influence by her labours in the way i have mentioned a far greater number of her race than most sisters are able to do it may indeed be so there is however another consideration it is chiefly the externals of education which can receive attention even in our best private schools little can be done at the best to form character deep permanent and abiding character blessings indeed great blessings such schools are but in proportion as their numbers are increased 
beyond those of our larger families in the same proportion is the influence which might be exerted by the teacher scattered and weakened whereas if the number be small the influence of those who teach by example and by precept is concentrated and rendered efficient there is no certainty that the feeble influence which is exerted on ninety millions might do more good by being concentrated on one tenth or one twentieth that number in other words if the same amount of pains were taken by mothers and sisters and the same amount of labour bestowed for the purpose there is no certainty that the world might not as soon be rendered what it should be through the medium of family education alone as with the aid of other influences christianity when brought to bear upon the family by the united exertions father mother brothers and sisters will probably have an influence on the regeneration of the world of which no human mind uninspired at least has ever yet conceived would that our young females sisters especially had but an imperfect conception of the power they possessed to labour in the cause of human improvement would that they had an, but an imperfect idea of female responsibility my remarks are applicable to all young women but they are particularly so to elder sisters to them is given in special charge the happiness and the destiny of all younger brothers and sisters be they ever so numerous as the desires of abel were to be expressed to cain and the latter was appointed to rule over the former so is the elder daughter appointed to rule over those whom god has in the same manner committed to her trust happy is she who has right views of her weighty responsibilities but thrice happy is she who not only understands her duty but does it but if the moral character much more than the physical and intellectual well-being of the family is given in charge to elder sisters and even to all sisters it is scarcely possible for them to form a correct idea of the weight of their influence in this respect at least till they are past the age when that influence is most necessary most persuasive and most effectual i have seldom found a young man who had strayed long and widely from the path of virtue who had enjoyed the society and influence of a wise and virtuous and attentive sister on the contrary i have almost uniformly found such individuals to have been in families where there were no sisters or where the sisters were not what they ought to have been or have been kept in schools where there were none but our sex i beseech every young female reader to make herself acquainted as far as she possibly can with the nature of her influence and the consequent responsibilities which devolve upon her let her understand that the day has gone by in which physical force was supposed to rule the world moral influence is now the order of the day and they whose moral influence is most weighty and powerful are they who most effectually bear rule but as it is reserved for women when sensible enlightened virtuous and pious to exercise the most weighty moral influence consequently it is her province to most effectually bear rule kings and emperors and presidents parliaments and congresses and assemblies and courts and legislators and judges may labour in vain to influence or to reform mankind so long as female influence is not what it should be but let females be rightly educated and let them do what a good education will enable them to do and vice will ere long hang her head virtue and piety which alone exalt a nation or the individuals that compose it will resume their sway then will the wilderness and solitary place be glad and the desert rejoice and blossom as the rose. End of chapter 2